So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the aperture function g of x of a transparency. And what do I mean by that? Uh, well, in previous videos, we've been talking about this aperture function as a physical aperture. So we've got some opaque screen uh, that's blocking light. And then we've got some region of that screen, maybe a pinhole, where light is able to pass through. So if we send a plane wave, it's gonna propagate into the screen. It's gonna be blocked. Uh, part, most of the plane wave is gonna be blocked, but some of it is gonna propagate through this slit. And so we mathematically represented that by an aperture function, g of x. And so if this is the x coordinate, then g of x graphically looks something like this. So it goes from zero, uh, where there's no light transmission to one. But what if I put something inside this aperture? So what if I put some material here, which isn't just air, so it's not just free space propagating, but it's not opaque. So this is not opaque. Uh, it lets light through, but it's got a specific refractive index, n, which is not equal to uh, 1. In fact, for now, let's ignore this aperture altogether. Let's just assume that the whole thing is made out of this transparent material. Your, uh, a first totally reasonable guess might be that the aperture function is just one for, the, for all of space uh, because this is letting all the light through. So it seems like the aperture function is just one, but it's not just letting the light through. It's affecting the light uh, in that since it has a different refractive index n, it's essentially adding some phase to the light. So let's say that this has some distance l. Um, if we were to propagate a plane wave, through free space in distance of a distance L. So let's say this is distance L. Uh, the transfer function of this for just a, a plane wave propagating through free space is just e to the j k times L. And so k is just two pi over lambda where this is lambda. So initially the plane wave looked like e to the j k z as it's propagating in this direction. Now it looks like e to the j k L times e to the j k z. And you can see that just by plugging in uh, or by plugging in z just goes to z plus l. So there's just some phase delay by this, by this space. But if instead we have a material of some refractive index n, and let's say that it's the same length, so let me, uh, let me trim that down and make sure it's, it's also equal to a length l, then as the plane wave propagates through, it's actually gonna propagate with a, a smaller effective wavelength, let's say, or a larger, uh, value of k. So k is now k times n. So the transfer function instead of uh, if instead of free space, this is just e to the k uh, times n times l, where k is still defined as 2 pi over lambda. And let's say lambda naught to make sure that's the free space wavelength. So let's let's call this k naught so there's no confusion whatsoever. And so if we wanted to turn this into an aperture function g, we're essentially trying to figure out what's the difference between uh, a refractive material of distance l and free space of distance l. And in this case, it's just, uh, the only difference is that there's a different phase. So we can define the aperture function then uh, as the difference in phase that a plane wave will see, or e to the j k naught times n times l minus k naught L, or uh, if you like it in terms of refractive index, e to the j n minus one times k naught L. Now the advantage of defining it this way is that now if we've got some, uh, say we've got some finite thickness uh, slab, so it's some length L, uh, we can now treat this mathematically as an aperture function g of x, which, uh, so before the plane wave hits this material, it's just got some, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's boring old plane wave. It's got some wavelength lambda. Afterwards, it's also got some wavelength lambda, but it's got a phase delay added to it. So this e to the j k naught l term. So just before this uh, and just after this. But now this aperture function is essentially saying, well, if we've got a plane wave that's propagating towards this aperture and then it hits the aperture and all of the effects of this plate are sort of compressed into a single uh, a single point, if you will, or a single slice, then immediately after this uh, plane wave propagates, or immediately after this plane wave leaves the aperture, it becomes this transfer function h, or e to the j 
n minus 1 times k naught l times whatever the plane wave was right before it hits the aperture. So this aperture function g of x in terms of uh, the difference in phase between this material and free space sort of allows us to compress a plate of finite size into an infinitely thin one, which is really cool because we know how to take the Fourier transform of one dimensional things. So we can take the Fourier transform of g of x and this just becomes g of kx. It's a little more difficult to interpret taking the Fourier transform of something that's finite in length. Like how would I, uh, I'm not sure how I would go about doing that. So this definition uh, allows us to uh, contain all the same information about what's happening to the plane wave in just this, uh, just this single slice. And this also uh, sanity check makes sense because if n is equal to 1 and we just don't have the plate there or the plates of the same material as free space, then our aperture function is just 1, exactly as we'd expect. So there's no phase delay added to the wave. And uh, this formulation that we've, we're talking about is uh, sometimes known as the thin transparency condition uh, because we're assuming that the transparencies are infinitely thin. So we're assuming they can be treated like a single slice. And that's not always the case, but generally it's, a, it's an excellent approximation. And if you don't worry about, so say that this was the start of our aperture, if you don't worry about this distance, uh, if you're not interested in this distance and you're only interested in this region out here, then they're essentially equivalent. But now things start to get interesting because we might say, well, I've got a plane wave and maybe it's not propagating towards just a plate with some constant L, but maybe this L, uh, maybe this, dis this length L, so let's call this L, is a function of X. So if this is our X direction, uh, we've got our, our transfer function or the, the function that describes this transparency, e to the j n minus one times K, which is just de defined in terms of lambda, or let's say lambda naught. Um, this is now, uh, we just replace this instead of a constant L, this is now a function of X. And this allows us to represent a lens. So if we can figure out an expression for this L of X, then we can figure out what the, uh, what the transfer function of this lens is. And if you want to be super precise and say that this lens has a finite extent to it, or in general any transparency has some finite extent to it, you can just multiply your newly found transfer function or your newly found phase delay uh, by a rectangle, let's say that this lens has diameter a, uh, of so some rectangle of x over a, or we're just multiplying graphically uh, by this value, so something that goes from 0 to a. And so this allows you to completely describe things like lenses even when they have a finite length to them. And that's really cool. Uh, but this has all been assuming one dimensionality. Um, if you were to actually deal with a two-dimensional lens, this would have to become a circle uh, function. And we need to include some, we need to include the y coordinate, but that's for another day. So trying to figure out what this L of X is, this is gonna be the, uh, the subject of our next video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.